Let's talk dreams. Most people have them. Some are even recurring, even for our presidents. Today, we're going to look into the history of dreams and how they can even shape the future of our country. Joining me now is the author of The Secret History of Dreaming, Robert Moss. Nice to have you Good here. Good to be dreaming with you, Kimberly. <laughs> we talk about the history of dreaming. Explain what you mean by that. Well, I've looked in the book at how dreaming, in the sense of dreams and visions, and also the play of coincidence, has been central to great lives and great events, including in the White House. So when we talk about dreams, why are they so important? Because you, it's about imagination, right, as well, well in, in utilizing what we've seen in our dreams? Certainly, but the reason that most people for most of human history on the planet have cared about dreams is the following. First of all, they thought we could see the future in dreams, and they wanted to get messages about the future, not only for themselves, but for the benefit of the society. Secondly, they thought that dreams were central to medicine and healing. We get diagnosis of possible problems in our dreams. We get imagery for healing. And thirdly, most humans have thought that dreams were way of getting in touch with the God we can talk to, the larger self, nature, and, and a wiser mind than is available in ordinary reality. Did you learn a lot about this? I was reading, as, as, a, as a child, uh, with the Aborigines, can you tell me a little I'm, bit about I'm that? I'm an Aussie, I'm a boy from the bush, and I grew up in the country with the oldest ongoing human tradition of anything, including a tradition in the Aboriginal culture that values dreams very highly. The Aborigines say that your personal dreams can take you into the dream time, which is a place of healing and creativity and contact with the ancestors. Also, when I was a kid, I was challenged by several crises of illness, and my dreams helped me to get well and helped me to get through. So from my boyhood, because I know about a traditional dreaming people, because I know that dreams were healing for me, I've understood that dreaming is really interesting. So tell me, if you will, how we access our dreams. How can we learn from them or learn to learn from our dreams? Because so many of us have these dreams that we don't understand. We've got the material all around us. Well, first of all, we want to catch our dreams. We want to write them down. Then we want to have a simple process for working with them, starting with asking, what are your feelings about a dream? Your feelings will tell you whether it's, whether it's important or not. Your feelings will tell you whether it's literal or symbolic. Your feelings will tell you whether you can let it go or you should stay with it. We want a process for talking about dreams so we can help each other to do more with our dreams and move towards appropriate action. I've invented this process. I call it the lightning dream work game. It's a quick, fun, high energy way of talking about dreams, which will encourage you to remember more and do more with it. You write about a lot of important people in here, as we've mentioned, of Harriet Tubman, Winston Churchill, Paul McCartney, how he oh, sure. had, wrote some of his songs from yeah. his dreams. Let's talk about President Obama for a moment. Not yeah. so much that, because you say he's a dreamer in several senses. You read a lot of reports every month about what other people are dreaming about President Obama oh, yes. and, and, and the economic crisis. What right. have you learned in those thousands of reports that you've read? Well, you know, mass events cast a shadow ahead of them. And what I mean in relation to dreams is lots of people were dreaming about the economic crisis before it came upon us. Sometimes those dreams were symbolic, and today there are even more of them. The typhoon dream, the tornado dream, the hurricane dream might be about a hurricane in ordinary reality. But, you know, a lot of people today are dreaming about tornadoes. And these are not regular tornadoes. This is the swirling, whirling, chaotic effect of an economy in crisis and a world in crisis. It's, it's infecting a lot of dreams. People are dreaming more than ever about being back in school and having to learn something new and face a new test. That is the situation in so many lives today. We have to retrain. We have to face a new test. So people's dreams are definitely reflecting the situation, but it's better than just mirroring. Dreams, the dreams are giving them some clues as to how to get forward and sometimes even how to find the new job, get the new skill, find a trail where one seems to have entered. So pay attention to what it is you're dreaming and journal them because that's going to help you a great deal if you can look back, right? Journal them. Ask yourself in relation to any dream, is this possibly showing me something about the future that I can use, about the possible future? Because one of the functions of dreams is to coach us and rehearse us for challenges and opportunities that lie ahead. And when life is tough, we need sources and resources beyond the ordinary. Dreams will give those to us. Robert Moss, thank you so much. The book is A Secret History of Dreaming. You'll learn a lot in here and you'll get in tune with your own dreams by doing so. Thank you so much. My it's pleasure. a pleasure to meet you. May your you. best dreams come true. Thank you. Thanks for watching Better.TV. For more stories like the one you just saw, catch the television program Better every weekday. Check your local TV listings to see if Better airs in your city.